Well, hello there, folks. <laughs> Welcome in, everyone, and good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Uh, Time-appropriate salutations to all of you folks who are in the chat. Uh, I see so many familiar faces. I see Suzanne and James and Jill and Chad and RB, Sam Peterson, my friend. Uh, Alberto, Darius, it's good to see you folks. Uh, thank you everyone for joining me. My name is Voodoo Val and I am going to be your host for another Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge this morning. I see people sharing tips in the chat. I love it. I love it. Bobby, welcome in. It's good to see you. Good morning. Muhammad, Miguel, good to see all of you. Laura, Mark. Uh, I'm so happy to be here um, to dive into challenge number three of our short but fun five day daily creative challenge um, before we go on our break. Uh, I'm very excited to get into what I have planned. Um, yay, the gorgeous hair is back. You're so sweet, chat. You guys are also very kind. Um, hello, Harvey. Hello, Judith. Um, before I jump into what we're going to be doing for today's challenge, however, uh, I would like to show you folks how you can get involved, where you can find the challenge at challenge assets that you can use to join me today, uh, and where you can post your work to get some feedback. So, um, hi Jordan Crawford, it's good to see you. Um, all right, so let's let's jump into it. Let me pop over here um, to my stream screen. Uh, so this is our landing page on behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop. Um, also one quick reminder, if you folks are over watching on YouTube this morning, please head over to behance.net slash live because that is where I am reading the chat over on my other monitor here. Um, that is where all of the links or helpful assets and tips are going to be posted by our moderators. Uh, so if you're looking around for links that are being posted in the chat and you're not seeing them, it's probably because you're on YouTube and you need to be over here on Behance. Um, but yes, so this is our challenge uh, landing page. And you'll know that you're on the right landing page if you see that it says June 22nd to June 26th because those are the dates that we are working with now. Um, scrolling down all the way to the bottom, if you ever want to review past challenges, you can always come down here and see all of the videos for past Photoshop Daily Creative Challenges um, that we have done, plus their starter files and links to where you can watch those individual videos, which is very helpful. Uh, essentially, every morning we unlock a challenge for you to participate in at 8 a.m. Pacific time. So we have already done like a logo design uh, kind of challenge. Uh, yesterday we worked with product photography, learning how to cut things out of photos, how to change their sizes and orientation, how to edit colors and so on and so forth. Today we're going to be designing an information card. This is design a product insert or information card using shapes and text elements. Uh, and I've got some pretty cool things to go over because not only are we going to be designing like an informational card, but the, the tools and the things we're going to go over today will also help you if maybe you're not really looking to do product branding and uh, packaging design like we're working on. Maybe you're working on stuff for your own brand and you need maybe some templates for social media posting um, and the like. So these are things that you can, you can do. Um, we're going to go over multiple things you can do with the information for uh, today's challenge. Um, and when you finish your challenge, if you're working along with me, even if you deviate from what we have planned, even if you kind of go off on your own tangent, um, I still want to see your wonderful work and see what you create along um, with me. And I know all the other mentors in the Discord do as well. Um, and I'm going to pull up the Discord and kind of show you folks how you can get involved over there and post your work. Uh, so if you head over to this link here, bit.ly slash PS Discord, make sure that P and S are capitalized otherwise you will not be sent to the proper server uh, you can actually come to this page which I will show you um, this is our Discord, and you can scroll through here and see a lot of different things um, on this left-hand side, uh, but where we post our challenges are here in the current challenge tab. So if you go into this channel, you'll see everyone has started to post their challenges from yesterday. I see Susan Holt came in and changed colors of these really cool anchors, which looks awesome. Congratulations on a cool uh, challenge entry, Suzanne. Um, it looks like Sally says, my day two, continuing the crochet theme. Uh, the original is the light blue one at the bottom. Yes, I know the wood background would be better, could be better, but going to be short of time for the next few days to fix it. That's cool. That's fine. You still did it. You changed these colors very, very well. Uh, I love it. Um, we've got this one. 
uh, from, let's see, who's this? instead of linking, just do file export, save for web. Oh, looks like some people are helping each other out. I'm loving this. This is amazing. So it looks like um, this from uh, Christina, who has posted a link to her challenge, and it looks like this is the logo from day one that she has applied to a jar product, which is really cool. I love the way uh, this little icon looks. It's so cool. Um, Nahal actually used his logo that he created on the first day and applied it to shirts and changed the color of the shirts with what he learned for challenge two, which looks really awesome. I'm loving this. Um, I, like I said, if you go off on tangents, that's totally fine because I don't know that this has much to do with our challenges, but I have to say it brings joy to my heart <laughs> to see this. Um, this is from uh, Orange Bandito, uh, and I think I speak for everyone in the chat when I say thank you, Orange Bandito, for gracing us with the presence of this T-Rex wearing a snapback and aviator glasses. I love it. I'm happier today for having seen it. Thank you very much. Um, We've also got these great uh, buttons from Vicky, which look awesome. Really, really cool uh, texture and stuff in here. And I love the the color changes across the board. Um, but yeah, great work from everybody. I can kind of scroll through here. A lot of people using the uh, dice images um, from Ellen Art uh, that were supplied in our, uh, in our starter files. Um, some baskets changing color here uh, from P40, uh, L Watch doing um, kind of applying a logo to various uh, water containers, um, which looks really cool. So well done, everybody. I love um, these challenge entries, um, but I do want to jump into what we have planned for today so that we don't run out of time. Um, so thank you all for posting. Um, and if you download, actually, let me pull up my landing page one more time just to make sure that you folks get this file. So if you go to the landing page, behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop, and you hit this get started button, it will actually bring you to a page where you can download um, this starter file so that you can work along with me. So once you do that, you will be able to open up this, uh, this file. And what I've done is I've kind of made like a generic... Um, very plain kind of informational graphic um, because like I said in the description for this it says design a project uh, product insert or informational card using shapes and text elements this card can also be designed for various forms of social media um, so this is this would be something where if you're working on designing things for a product you know when you get like a, a board game or um, really any kind of product that you might get aside from maybe food items they usually come with a card or a small printout that just has basic information about that product, maybe instructions on how to use it, or perhaps a little bit about the creators, a little bit about the history of the brand, and so on and so forth. So this is a good way to create something for that. Um, I've also got a couple of other files open here. Uh, one for uh, the Twitter post image because we can uh, kind of transfer the look of our informational graphic into a Twitter uh, post image. And then also, I've also got the Insta story uh, post. So just in case you folks would like to do this for social media, instead of just an informational post cutout, um, the Insta story ratio is a portrait uh, orientation of 1080 by 1920 pixels. Um, and the new 2020 Twitter post image size um, is 1024 by 512 pixels, just in case you'd like to follow along that way. Um, but I think for today, I'm going to work with my square uh, because I post a lot of stuff on Instagram. Um, and so I would like to make a little template for Instagram. Um, if I hide, I can hide my uh, stuff here. Um, and you can see all the different elements that I have in this file. One thing I would like to call attention to real quick is um, if you guys downloaded this file, um, you might notice if you've updated your Photoshop that if you didn't have the Montserrat uh, font, you do now because when you open files with um, fonts that are from Adobe fonts um, that you don't yet have um, installed uh, for your or added to your um, your fonts in Photoshop, when you open a file now, that that font is now added into your 
uh, your font list so that you can start to use it. So if anyone in here, like I said, did not have um, uh, Montserrat before, um, you should be able to click and edit it because it should have grabbed that font for you, which is really, really useful because then you don't have to rush around looking for fonts, um, trying to find things that match with files that you download and so on and so forth. Um, I've got my logo in here from uh, lesson number one. Um, and all I've done really is I've taken a shape and I've just, if I hide this here, I've taken a shape and I've just put like a little cap right on the top here. Um, and then I've also taken a rectangle um, tool and I've just applied a, uh, let's see if I can grab it real quick. I've applied a stroke um, around the edges to kind of frame um, what I am uh, going to be putting in here for text. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually close these down aside from my logo and I'm gonna kind of make something here from scratch. And one of the things that I'm also gonna do if I can real quick, um, is I'm going to go to my, I'm going to navigate to my starter files and I'm actually going to pull up the starter file from yesterday, um, which you can also get, ooh, that's number one, um, because I might actually grab some of my dice images from yesterday and throw some of my dice in here. So if you need um, challenge uh, starter file number two, you can always go to our landing page and pick that up. So um, the way that I basically did this is I'm going to grab um, my re rectangle tool. Um, which is over here. If I hold, let me move myself um, away over here um, for now so that you can see um, how I'm snagging this. I'm right clicking and I'm gonna grab my rectangle tool. I like to use the rounded rectangle tool um, and you can do this a lot of different ways. Um, I really did like just like the kind of cap that I put here. Um, you, if you wanted, you could put like a little footer um, here and I'm just going to kind of actually take a lot of inspiration from some of our UI UX designers that we have in the chat um, and I'm going to start placing things around and making um, little mock-up layouts for how I might like to design this. Um, one thing I'd like to talk about as well as the actual tools and stuff that I'm using for this um, is talk about the inspiration because many of you might be really literally just starting out doing something like this um, and watching me do it you might be like oh okay I get what's happening here but when you sit down to do it yourself you might not actually have uh, a lot of I guess a, a visual database or a personal visual library for how something like this might look. Um, I suggest going to uh, Pinterest to look for inspiration. You could also open up Adobe Spark um, and check out some of the layouts from there for inspiration on how you might set your own up. Um, I actually really like this. It's very simple. It's not, you know, it's not a huge deal, um, but I kind of think when it comes to posts like this, um, simplicity is often better because the design rather while you want it to be eye-catching you don't really want it to be so busy that people can't understand what you're trying to convey um so i might leave this here if i wanted to i could make another um layer um with my rectangle tool i could go like this just to make a little frame maybe i would take the color out of that uh, from my properties panel um and then maybe i would come to my stroke and apply a stroke um, if I wanted to, um, let's see, let me grab, uh, you know what? I actually really like this dark gray color. I kind of tie that in. Um, and, uh, let me see if I can bump this up. Let me see if I can add like a, like a 12, maybe, maybe more like a 24. Um, so you can kind of play around with a lot of different, um, layouts and, and things like that, that you would like. Um, now, uh, I don't know if I will keep this little border uh, that I have done because I'm not sure that it it, it fits 100%, but I'm just kind of putting it there so you can see how I did that on my previous starter file. Um, I'm going to hide it for now, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use some clipping masks and I'm going to add some colors and textures in here to kind of spice things up. Um, I might also add a drop shadow, and I know that some people don't like drop shadows, but I really do if they're used properly. I think they're cool, um, so that is probably what I'm gonna do. If you hate drop shadows, hide your eyes. <laughs> also, Claudi, it's so good to see you. Welcome into the chat. Everyone give Claudi uh, from Print My Soul a follow because she is a wonderful designer. She's been on stream with me many times before, um, and, or a couple times before, and um, I've learned a lot from her, so. 
Um, I'm gonna grab a texture that I love. Um, surprise, surprise, it's a noise texture. I'm sure no one's ever heard, seen me use noise textures before. Um, but you like what you like, right? Um, and I'm gonna drop this in here and I'm gonna go through um, and do my second favorite thing, um, which is applying uh, my clipping masks to this. So I'm going to transform uh, this texture. I'm gonna bump this up. I'm gonna right click it and I'm gonna apply a clipping mask to it so that it only stays, let's see, it only stays in the border of um, what is directly underneath it. I'm gonna duplicate that and I'm gonna bring it down um, and I'm gonna do the same thing here if I can, let's see. Actually, I need to bump that. <clears throat> in between. There we go. Uh, and I'm gonna do the same thing here. Create clipping mask. Um, now, another thing that I can do is I can bring in some colors. Um, and I don't know if this is gonna work, but I'm actually gonna do an experiment. Um, and I'm gonna grab, I have some interesting wave textures as well, and I'm going to apply uh, some wave textures here. And I'm gonna see, I'm gonna group all of this. Remember when I talk about grouping things together, um, if you click the topmost layer that you'd like to group and you hold shift and click the bottommost layer that you'd like to group, you can select them all and hit control G. Um, if you would like to select groups to group, or items, um, layers to group together uh, that are not in a straight row all combined together, you can always hold control and click and unclick things um, to select layers out of order and then I'm gonna hit control G. Um, and then I'm gonna drag in, I don't know if this is gonna work, but we're gonna go for it. We're gonna, we're gonna have some fun here. Um, I think this is like pretty cool. Um, so I'm gonna drop in this strange little uh, thing here and I'm gonna put this on a clipping mask uh, for the group that is underneath. Boom, like that. I, I like this, I think it's kind of cool. Um, it adds an interesting little bit of texture and strangeness to this. And I'm gonna flip through some blend modes. Um, if you come over here underneath the uh, filter type, um, you'll see a little blending mode drop down here. Um, and I can click that and now I can kind of hover over these and I can test out blend modes that work well uh, or find one uh, that works well with my current project. Um, all of us now, if we have our Photoshop's updated, should be able to do the preview. Um, but one thing that I know you can do on PC um, is if I click this and I select one um, and I don't click on anything else so that the little blend mode area is still highlighted blue, I can actually cycle through with my up and down uh, arrow keys, which works. Um, this is actually, this is actually nice. It's light. It's a little lighter than I want, but it's actually pretty cool. Um, I might I might go back to that. Um, this one is also kind of cool. It just adds that subtle texture in there. Um, it's a smart object. So if you remember yesterday, when it comes to using smart objects, um, if I add an adjustment layer to this, I can actually um, uh, make sure that I keep my original file and then I can add little drop downs in my adjustments um, uh, list and hide and unhide any adjustments I make. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, uh, control U to uh, change hue and saturation. Um, and I'm gonna uh, scroll through and I'm gonna, I'm gonna maybe change colors just slightly. I'm gonna see what, the, what, they, what that does. Hmm. I actually like it the way it was. I'm gonna leave it at zero, but I am gonna desaturate a little bit. I'm gonna bring my saturation down just slightly um, or maybe pump it up, but maybe increase the lightness. That looks pretty cool. I like that. That's kind of a nice, um, soft texture. Uh, so now that I have this, I can actually close. You remember we went over, um, that you can close and, uh, like collapse and expand all of my little smart filters that I've got going here. So I'm going to collapse that. Um, and now I have kind of a nice little, um, textured, interesting border. Um, I'm also going to, like I said, I'm going to add some drop shadows, um, because one thing that I, I just, I can't deny, I really like to do, um, 
is I love to um, add noise textures to drop shadows. I think it's really cool. Um, so I'm going to quickly, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop another noise texture in here um, to set some very subtle noise to my background uh, because I think that would look cool. Um, which I think is always a great uh, excuse for trying new things. I think that some people take things way too seriously and worry, worry, worry um, that they have to have a, a really um, explicit reason for doing certain things um, in their designs. Uh, but I think sometimes a good enough uh, um, uh, explanation for why you're trying something a little odd is simply because it might look cool. It might seem neat. You know, experiment. Uh, I think, let's see, I'm going to turn the opacity down. Um, and I'm going to go into my levels um, with control L uh, and I'm going to make this a little harsher. So I'm going to bring down the kind of brighten the highlights there and bring in the shadows like so. I'm not sure if this is going to be something I like or not. Maybe I'll bump it down just to give it a subtle texture. And then I'm going to double click um, these rectangles that I have here and I'm going to say uh, let's see, let's do a drop shadow um, and I'm going to make this drop shadow black, but I'm going to turn the opacity down. <clears throat> let's see, I'm going to do normal um, and I'm going to push the distance out. Oh, but you know what? I actually have my, um, I have my things in a group right now with the clipping mask over it. So the clipping mask actually applies it to my shadow. Um, so let's see if we can solve this. That's a little curveball issue right there. Let's see if we can solve this. Um, I'm gonna collapse my group. I'm gonna right click it and I'm gonna convert this to a smart object. Um, and now I'm going to apply a drop shadow. So let's see, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna double click. I'm gonna do that drop shadow now and let's see if I switch this to black and say okay and then push my disc there we go so now it's a smart object and it's not actually capturing um, the the clipping mask for the texture that I added is not actually applying to that anymore um, so I'm going to turn the opacity down I'm going to bump the distance back I'm gonna pull the spread back a little bit I'm gonna increase the size let's pull the distance back um, as well and I'm gonna add less noise I'm gonna add less noise to that. Um, so there's just a little teeny tiny subtle thing going on there and I'm gonna hit okay. Boom, problem solved. Um, I think I'm even going to um, decrease the uh, opacity of that subtle texture in the back and leave it like that. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is I am going to add some text. Now there's a lot of ways, we're coming to a close here so I wanna make sure that I get this right. Um, there's a lot of ways that we can add text. Number one, we can hit T on our keyboard um, and we can just click right here. It'll put in a default Lauren Ipsum thing and I can say, um, let's see, uh, dice sale. Maybe I actually wanna do um, caps because I think Montserrat looks cool in caps. Um, dice sale. Uh, and then what I can do is I can, I can uh, change it to be um, right aligned or left aligned or center aligned and that's all well and good but when I'm done doing this um, I might find that it's way uh, it, it's 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 it doesn't really leave room for editing a paragraph of work so another quick way I'm gonna change my um, color and obviously I'm doing this pretty fast so um, the colors I, I, I don't claim that these colors work 100% perfectly together um, but I am going to uh, just leave them as is for now since we are limited on time um, I'm gonna click now to add a paragraph and I'm gonna drag with my cursor my my text tool and that adds a paragraph um, and it fills it with um, lorem ipsum at first and I can change the uh, the size of my text um, and I can come in to my uh, character panel if you don't see the character panel you can select window and then select character um, from the window and I can actually um, adjust 
um, how far away everything is spaced to make my graphic and save this as a template um, so that I can use it on various uh, social media platforms. Um, I think that's all the time I have for today. I hope I've covered enough that you folks can get started making informational graphics um, and posts for social media and things. If you have any questions, um, please feel free to tag me um, on Discord, but that's all that I have for you today. Thank you very much for joining me. You are all wonderful and, and precious, um, and I hope that you folks will stick around because we do have photo retouching with Katrine Eisman coming up right after me. Um, it's going to be a fabulous uh, a stream and also stick around for all the other wonderful things that we have going on today. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to take off, but I hope all of you have a wonderful day of designing and I will see you tomorrow morning. Adios, everyone. <laughs>